you need to be at two and a half million dollars in your IRA or 401k to retire. If you don't have that much money in your retirement account, you don't have enough. Write this down. I know if some of you are driving down the road and are on a treadmill, you have to know this term. Because if you say it wrong, your employer will jack it up. It's called an employee after tax contribution. And we are going to talk about rich people. Rich people. <laughs> 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 this is for you, okay? <laughs> and we always are talking about people trying to, you know, make their first contribution to a retirement account. But I want to talk about maxing it out for high income earners, why you should do it, and also the order that you should do I it. I like it. Maybe if you want to be a rich person, this yeah. is what to do too. Yeah. This, this is, is, I mean, I, we hear so many of those influencer podcasts, right? All of us see it where if you want to be rich, do what the rich people do. All right, we're delivering. Here's what rich people do. So I like, I asked Matt before, I go, you got a decision tree mm -hmm. on how a one percenter, yeah. high income earner, yeah. should consider what to do when it comes to retirement accounts. And you said, I go, can I see it? He goes, it's up in my head. <laughs> I said, oh, really? Okay. Well, we're just going to explore that little decision tree chart. And I might debate I, with you a little bit. I do see. actually have a decision tree chart. And uh, you have to be following me on social media to find that. But um, I'm going to. Display it for Just, you, okay. or I'm going to roll it out for all the podcast listeners okay. here. Uh, but here's why I want to talk about it, though. When you put money in your retirement account, it's tax advantaged. And I'm not even getting into traditional or Roth. We can talk about that. We talk about a lot of episodes in the podcast, okay. when to do which, and we love Roth in general. But we're not even talking about that. I'm just talking about getting money in. A lot of high-income people think, particularly our high-income earners, even our entrepreneurs, like, oh, retirement accounts, are because they're like, I make so much money. Why would I, I can put $6,000 in an IRA. They have all these misconceptions. Correct. That it's just not going to move the needle much. But wrong. Wrong. Okay. When you add it up, it's a lot. Yep. Number two myth or misconception is, well, someone said, I don't want to die with too much in my retirement account, or I should use life insurance now, or I should go over to some alternative method. Now, we're all for diversification. I love rental real estate, notes, alter, alt assets. We just held our alt asset summit. Yeah. But you can do a lot of those investments. Now, let's not talk about life insurance per se. I'm not saying life insurance is bad either. But we've got to continue to stay committed to pass and go on our Monopoly board every mm -hmm. year, <laughs> putting money on our retirement account, because that snowball grows so much faster than we realize. Mm -hmm. It's just out of sight, out of mind, and it's okay if you dive with money in your freaking retirement account. Yeah. It's gonna go to your spouse or your kids. It'll still be tax preferred, so mm -hmm. get over it. Yeah, and l let me just make sure you understand this. You could be putting in over 100K a year. We're not talking about Easily. just like 5,000 bucks, 6,000 bucks. Okay, we're talking about over 100K a year into your retirement account. Even if you're a W-2 employee, I'm not talking about you have to be self-employed mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. this, which a lot of our amazing tax strategies work best if you're self-employed. This is even you're a high income W-2 earner. Yep. This can work. So let's break it down. Okay, last point, may I? Okay, yeah. Last myth conception is, well, I don't want to put money in retirement accounts because I'm going to be stuck in Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're listening to this podcast, mm -hmm. you already know we would assume that we busted that myth. You're going to be able to invest it in whatever you think is best for the best rate of return. Yeah. But okay, so those are three myths out there. Um, okay, so Matt Sorensen, I'm a high wage earner. Okay, I work at Verizon. I work at okay. IBM. I work at you know Facebook. I'm going to have a big fat W two. Mm -hmm. uh, what should I do first, according to Matt Sorensen lore? Okay, first I want you to match and out. I want you to put in as much money in your 401k to go and get the match. Let's say you make 200k a year. Okay. okay? Let's say you make 200k a year. Well, you can put in and let well let's say that you work at Facebook okay. and let's say that Facebook has a 4% match. They yeah. say if you put in 4% of what you make, which would be $8,000, we'll put in 4% of what you make, $8,000. So now I'm at $16,000 and I only, it only cost me 8. So I got a 100% return. 100% rate of return on my money. <laughs> Boom, that's an easy one. Even if they invested in crap in Wall Street, you're right. like, no offense, my financial investment advisors in Wall Street products, I have Wall Street products too. But even if they choose something terrible, yeah. I've already doubled my money. Okay, yeah. that's number one. I want to write that down. Number one, get the freaking match. Yeah, and we tell this to every client, whether you're middle income, high income, this makes sense for everybody, match and get out. The difference here for high income earners is we got a lot more steps and buckets oh, to drop. Oh, money we in. got, <laughs> yeah, this is step one. Okay, can I throw out step two? I wanna see if this fits okay, in your model. All right, okay, okay, step two, fund your personal Roth. Yep. 
That's your number two? That's number I two, I nailed baby. it. Okay. All right. Find Mark your... said, Are, is this, is this the, the Mark Kohler approved method? I'm like, this is the Matt Sorensen method, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same. Okay. Fund your personal wealth. But Matt, um, my accountant said I make too much money. You do make too much money. And we said 200K in the example. You're over the standard Roth IRA contribution limit. So you can't just drop 7K in a Roth IRA, but you can do $7,000 in a backdoor Roth IRA. We've got separate podcasts, videos, a lot of training on that. But it's basically a way you put money in a traditional IRA, non-deductible, and you convert it to Roth. At the end of the day, you're doing 7K a year Roth IRA. Yeah, let me just put this on a practical note. If you're a high wage earner, you're old enough to remember Animal House with Jim Belushi. You wanted to be in Roth Gamma Gamma Chi party. You wanted to wear a toga <laughs> outfit. You wanted in the party. But you made too much money. You couldn't go in the front door. So you had to go around to the back door to get into the Roth party. You can do that. Your financial advisor is wrong. I cannot emphasize that enough. Watch our podcast, check out our articles, just Google Backdoor Roth IRA Sorensen or Backdoor Roth IRA Kohler. We'll give you everything you need to know about how to do it. So that's step two. Now, I'm gonna throw out step three. I wanna just see what you're saying. Mm. At this juncture. I thought this was my list. I know, I know, but I just wanna say, <laughs> okay, all right, you tell me what number three is. I think I've got a number three that's gonna blindside you. Oh, really? I okay, do. okay. What's your number three? My number three would be, ooh, okay. I'm gonna do the HSA. Wrong. Number okay, three. So you're already wrong. See, I would, you know what I do? Spouse. Mm, spouse backdoor Roth IRA? I'm just saying, I'm like, I think at this juncture, before now, you go HSA, now, oh, I love HSA okay, though. Okay, okay, we didn't say we were married. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so let's go for you married. I like where you went there. Yeah. Spousal backdoor Roth IRA. <laughs> that didn't sound right. Do not repeat <laughs> that. Do not repeat that again. Let's okay. just okay. Okay. let's just Woo. say you get another seven k because you have a spouse. And your spouse is going to also do the backdoor Roth IRA. Okay. I'm trying to refocus here. We're going to talk about the sweet spot on the 401k too, but that's another topic too. Okay, so no, but I think that I think if okay. you're married, I you know I love the HSA, and I would yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with HSA I'm with you on number okay. three. But I think if you're married. You've got to look at your spouse. Okay. Do they have a day job with a match? Yep. And have they funded their personal Roth? I think you yes. times two here. Yeah. And what I would say, and probably, and this is why I would think about it individually, if you're married and you have a working spouse, we're pretty much doing the same damn list over yeah. on their side Fair too. Enough. We're going to go in the same order there. Now, they they might be a different income than you, so we, there might be a little difference there, but. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's do this. Okay. Same spouse yep. back yep. to Roth IRA. You know what? Can I? I'm, not, I'm just going to throw out a little digression here. What do you call it when you go off the freeway here for a minute? A little uh, side note um, here. Oh, what's the um, word? A, uh, not a diversion. Not a a detour. Detour. Little detour, detour. Here. <laughs> Little detour. I just want to throw this out. Uh, Matt and I have the love of our lives, Michelle and Patty. And mm -hmm. I just want to throw this out. You know, this week, Patty and I are having an afternoon retreat planning session to go over these things before year end. And I want to say this. I think mm. this is an important emotional piece of this process. You can't just decide this in a vacuum if you are married. Yeah. I think it's so important you take your spouse, whether your husband or wife listening to this, and do a little off-site retreat, go to a spa, go somewhere fun, yeah. and, and just say, let's talk about our retirement accounts. What are our current balances? Mm -hmm. What can we be doing together? I'll tell you right now, your spouse is going to love that. Because yeah. they want to be a part of that conversation. And I know in some relationships, the woman's doing all the financial planning and the men, man's doing all the financial planning. But I think this conversation, especially when you're de determining this order, um, is a great opportunity to plan together so that you understand why you're doing this. Yeah. And it, it could be a real bonding experience. Yeah, yeah. And I think you're going to be more successful, encouraged, uh, collaborative, better at uh, opportunity to meet all your investment goals and retirement mm -hmm. goals if you're doing it together. So I think that's a awesome recommendation. A little detour there is yeah, okay. for sure, yeah. Okay, number four, drop it, I love it. Okay, number four, we're gonna do the HSA. Okay, health savings account. Now, some of you might be thinking, Matt, you said for retirement accounts. I mm -hmm. want you to think about your HSA as a retirement account, not really as a health savings account because the HSA, I don't have to spend the money in it. Remember, I put the money in, I get a tax deduction. As I invest it, it grows, and I don't pay any tax on the investment gains. But as I pull the money out for medical and healthcare expenses, there's no expense on the way out. There's no tax at on any the way age. out. At any age, now or later, where if you're looking to really maximize money for the long haul in retirement, don't draw on that HSA yet. 
leave it for later because you can use it later. The number one expense you're going to have in retirement is medical. Damn it, I was going to say that. <laughs> okay. I'll say this too. The number one reason for bankruptcy, medical. Yeah. We just had a Medicare podcast, uh, Medicare training for our Main Street Tax Pros two weeks ago. I called you after, didn't I? Yes. It yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah, the, yeah. the Medicare... I got uh, some learn. I got some learning to do. Oh, oh, it's a blind spot for me, or was. But um, one of the takeaways from that is the average American spends, after age fifty five, over three hundred and fifty thousand on medical. Average. Now, whether your insurance is covering the bill or not, yeah. or Medicare is not, you're going to have a, a six figure times three. Yeah. medical bill between 55 and date of death. And how are you going to plan for that? So anyway, I think the HSA is number four, again, times two, if you're married. And we've done podcasts and trainings on the HSA. And if you're listening to this podcast, guess what? It's open enrollment. Open enrollment oh, yeah. started November 1st. It's so important that you choose at your company or in your individual plan, if you're an entrepreneur, a high deductible plan. If you have the high deductible plan, high deductible plan it unlocks the HSA. Uh, we've done so many shows on it. I think it's one of the best kept secrets in tax planning. I yeah. really do. I think the HSA is critical. Yes. Yeah, I like that it's number four, again, times two. Yeah. All of these we're going to say, I'll just say it from now on. I won't repeat it. Times two, if you're married, you're going to be going through the same lineup. Yeah, yeah. And so let me tell you where we're at here in t terms of total numbers. We said you did 8000 to get the match of an employee contribution. Your employer matched at 8000 And it so could be ten grand or twelve grand. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. doing one freaking yeah, example. Yeah, yeah, you're making yeah, yeah. 200K. Yeah. And then you did 7000 in the backdoor Roth because you're under 50. If you were 50 year old, you could have done 8000 Now, let's say you did the family HSA because you have a kid or a spouse, so you can do family. That's $8,300. We're at $31,000 so far. And we're not done yet, guys. Is okay. that 31 times two or just one? That's just one. So if you got a spouse, we're at 60, you know. 60 plus thousand. Now I did yeah. the family HSA, so, but you're pretty much about 55. See, and this is, I'm, I know some of you might be a little, I'm going to use a word my mom would use. I am so galled. I'm going to, I'm so mad I could spit. You know, <laughs> some weird thing my mom would say. But I know some of you are like frustrated because we are in a tough economy right now. I know that there's many, many people struggling with the cost of groceries, the cost of gas and transportation and housing. We get that. But there still is, I hate to say, this one to five or 10 percenters out there that are like, hey, I'm paying a ton in taxes and I'm flipping the bill for the rest of the country. I want to save some taxes. Well, these are tax deferred or tax free type strategies. Some of you may say, well, I don't get a tax deduction for a Roth. Yeah, but you'll never pay tax again. Don't get hung up on getting the deduction. It can also be a plan to build a bucket that will be tax free. So anyway, I just yeah. wanted to, as a digression, say, don't be uh, too frustrated or offended with our cavalier attitude <laughs> towards putting this way this much money but when we have clients that have five hundred thousand yeah. dollar w-2s and small businesses they want to know this yeah it, yeah it's, it's so when important. i was broke i wanted to know this and i didn't feel offended or anything like that i'm like that's just where i'm going i want that's the mindset you mm -hmm. should have is that's where i'm going to be going i need to know this for the future the other thing i would say about this i think a lot of people think well why, why don't i just put thirty thousand dollars in a brokerage account matt why don't I just invest $30,000? Mm. Why do I got to put it in my 401k? And then I got another account over here. Then a Roth IRA, got an HSA. Why am I doing that? It's tax advantage, okay? You're either getting a deduction to put it in or that money grows and is coming out totally tax-free. In any event, though, when you're making investment gains, it's not going on your 1040. You're not paying taxes. Every dollar of investment gains you have in these accounts gets reinvested. When you talk about investing over 10, 20, or 30 years, the difference in that is incredible. Okay, so you get a huge head start and boost by using these tax advantage accounts versus just dropping it into a taxable account. All right, now I've got, I'm gonna throw out number five. Yeah, what do you, what do you I'm, think? I'm, I'm trying to use you, if you listeners are here, you know I'm trying to throw Matt a, a, you know, a curveball here. But anyway, um, so I wanna <laughs> I think they've proven this out. they can hit a curveball. <laughs> One of the major drains on a couple's retirement savings plan is college savings. Mm. So okay. I would say if you really are 30 to 60 grand in, mm -hmm. you've done your match, you doubled, you did your mm -hmm. Roth, you did your HSA, 
I think it's a time to just sit back and go, okay, do I have children under age 18? Am I trying mm -hmm. to do a college savings plan mm -hmm. for them? I'm not saying throw every dollar that direction, mm -hmm. but at least decide, am I going to fund the educational savings account, which is like a Roth IRA for education? Am I going to do Roth IRAs for the kids, mm -hmm. hoping that they can pull that out for college? Mm -hmm. um, should I look at a 529? We've done many podcasts on that. So I don't know. I think, would you divert a little and go look at college saving? I, I like to wait on college savings for kids. I want to come to them later. They're definitely mm. in the order here, but the, I, for me, they're a little bit later because I think you need to put more money in your you retirement. You got to put your account. own oxygen mask on first. You got to put your own mask on first. You know, mm -hmm. every good flight attendant knows that. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so we want to put your own mask on first. Now, if you're like, Matt, I've been saving my retirement account for a while. I got a million plus in this. Um, I'm going to continue to save and doing this 30K a year. Uh, and I got kids that are 10 or something and I want to start setting aside for college. Cool. I I'm good there. If you're under a million bucks and you got kids, I'm not doing this yet. Mm -mm. Thank you. you go community to college. Be, yep. Let me say this. Mark and I have done a show on this. You need to be at two and a half million dollars in your IRA or 401k to retire. If you don't have that much money in your retirement account, you don't have enough. And you know what we did? We did a survey with our directed IRA customers. And we said, how much money do you think you're gonna need in your IRA or retirement accounts to retire? And I had options, uh, 250 to 500, 500 to a million, a million to one and a half, one and a half to 2.5, 2.5 million or above. Do you know what the majority answer was of how much they thought they needed in their retirement? Let me get, uh, under a million probably. No, over two and a half million. They said really? we need to have over two and a half wow. million in our retirement account. Okay, well account. that they shocked me. That, they went to the proper answer. It's because they know they know what's up. They're listening to the Directed IRA mm. podcast. Listen to Mark and Matt. Okay, okay. But you know what? The follow up question I asked in the survey was, "How likely do you think it is that you will meet your retirement goal?" Okay, that was the question right after this. Oh. What do you think the answer was? Oh my God! <laughs> it, I would think and it I would be. And I gave him an answer. I said, I said, um, multiple not choice. likely, somewhat likely, very likely, what somewhat, you, somewhat, somewhat likely. No, okay, oh, you've got to have more faith than our customers. They, the majority, the vast majority of answers said very likely. They felt it was very likely that they could hit that retirement wow. of two and a half million dollars. Jeez. Matt Sorensen, you're doing your job. You're I changing know. America. <laughs> it's like, wow. I, I love those numbers. But the point I'm trying to make there is really assess and be realistic where you're at. I think the impulse is I want to help my kids go to college. It just makes you feel good. It seems more tangible. It might be five or six years away, and you might have retirement 20 years away. And so it's like I better start saving for it now. I, I'm still like let's make sure you're maxing out your retirement and make sure you're on track to be at that – 2.5 million adjusted for inflation mm -hmm. too, by the way, in okay. your 20 or 30 years. All right. Well, it goes back to the, I'm not going to trust any polls during this yeah, cycle. Okay. True. <laughs> true. <laughs> okay. All right. So I do my HSA, Matt. We're going to okay. put, I'll put, okay. College savings off to the side, depending when, where they're at. Um, this brings us to the concept of match and out. So I got yeah. my match. I went that. out and did a couple things. We did the out. You're coming back. back home now. We're coming back. All right. Tell me where we're going. All right. We're coming back to the 401k and we're going to do an after tax contribution. Oh, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. we're going to still do our deferral amount up to our deferral. Well, that's true. I only did 8k. Okay. That's let's right. do finish the employee deferral. And that is actually on my list, by the okay. way. Okay. Employee. Let's finish the employee. We only did 8,000. So as an employee, under age 50, you get to put 23,000 total into your 401k. Now, remember on step one, we did eight and the employer match date. So I've got 15K left of employee deferral, which you can do as Roth, mm -hmm. pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So let's do that first. That's pretty simple. So now I'm at 46,000, by the way, yeah. if you're following on the math here. We're at 46K because that's a 38K after the HSA. I did another 41, 15K, which you could have picked to do traditional Roth. Now we're up to 46K. Okay. Now, uh, a couple thoughts, if I may. Uh, for those that are 50 or over, it's 30,500. If you're under age 50, it's 23,000. And and I'll say it a little, where I know we sometimes I get comments from listeners that are like, you guys do this all the time. You talk too fast. <laughs> so like, okay. All right. Well, I want to slow down and say this. You've done a match, got the company match. You went and funded your personal Roth. You went and did your health savings account. You're coming back to the 401k and you walk into or call up your administrator at your company if you're an employee and you say, hey, I want to change my withholding on my paycheck 
and get it up to the complete deferral for my age. So they'll go, oh, okay, well, there's eight months left in the year, there's this, and they're gonna go, okay, that'll mean we're gonna withhold X dollars from your paycheck for the rest of the year to get you up to the 23 or the 30,500. And you say, yes, they're probably gonna have you sign something, then boom, you've got your deferral amount. That would be stage five here. Same for your spouse. Now, this is where I talk about the sweet spot also, because if you're an entrepreneur and you are a one percenter, high income earner with a small business, you're going to be able to still do this. It's not going to be prohibited from a, a over waiting, testing thing, you know, that you're, you're highly uh, compensated employee you, rules. Yep. And all that. You're going to be okay. Even if you have a safe Harbor plan, you can still do this part. Um, you got to play with the match like all the other employees. You can't really sock away some major money. Mm -hmm. We're going to come to other ideas in a moment. But if you're an entrepreneur too, this is where you're going to put your spouse on the payroll for the exact amount to get this deferral. So approximately, if your spouse is under age 50, you'd put him or her on payroll for about 25,000 and change. FICA hits, the net paycheck's 23. You drop that in Roth or traditional you're off to the races. So you can choose a lower payroll amount for your spouse if you can control that narrative. But it, again, if you're both W-2, corporate America, you're just gonna- You're doing, you're, you're, your you're spouse deployed. is doing the second yep. thing act exactly what you did. Yeah. Um, let me say one other important point on that, on the 401k is many 401k plans and administrators will just say, you can just make a one-time contribution yourself. You can just mail in the check or ACH it to your 401k. Mm, true. Is it doesn't have to necessarily come from your employer. You want to the coordinate. Paycheck. Yeah, they actually like, and withheld from your paycheck. That's usually the easiest. But if you're like, well, I've got 10K left to put in on an employee contribution and it's December and I'm not going to have a paycheck that high where they can withhold the whole thing, mm. you can throw the payment in directly. This is a great year end strategy because you may go, well, I don't have enough payroll left. That doesn't matter. Go take it from your inheritance from grandma two months ago. That money can come from anywhere. <laughs> go, in, go into your <laughs> HR department and go, here's the rest of my deferral, put it in. Yeah. They don't care where it came yeah. from because your paycheck for the whole year is gonna be greater than that. So exactly. it doesn't matter what your November or December paycheck is. Great comment. Okay, so step five, we finished our employee contribution. We had 15K left, now okay. we're up to 46K. And again, we're doing under 50 numbers here. And okay. just you, your spouse can come do the same thing here next. Okay, number six, my friend. Now we're to where I was wanting to go, which is the after-tax employee contribution, because you get to go up to $69,000. Again, this is okay. under age 50. You could go up to sixty nine thousand dollars of total money in the four hundred one k. So we got to look at where we're at. We did. We just maxed out the employee at twenty three k. We got an eight thousand match earlier on step one. So now we are at thirty one thousand dollars in the solo. Sorry, in the four hundred one k. This is your day job four hundred one k. Your high income earner. I've got thirty eight thousand dollars left that I can put into the four hundred one k but I can't do an employee contribution. The company's not doing any more match. So how do I get it in? Mm -hmm. This is the after-tax employee contribution. You can put in, most plans allow for this. We've had many clients that have been a big companies, you know, many different varieties, dropping this in. This can roll out to a Roth IRA. Even though most 401k plans, your money's locked down, this is one that can actually roll out the after-tax employee contribution. Okay, now I want a couple thoughts for everybody. Write this down. I know if some of you are driving down the road or you're on a treadmill, you have to know this term. <laughs> I bugged Matt's for years once we learned it. Because if you say it wrong, your employer will jack it up. It's called an employee after tax contribution, which in a sane world, no one would ever do. Let me tell you the, how we learned this. I think it put some context to it. <laughs> yeah. but, Matt, I remember where, almost where I was at when Matt called me and said, dude, I just learned something so cool. <laughs> and we learned it from some clients, a very unbeknownst client. So we had a bunch of guys up in South Dakota. Alaska, they were in Alaska. Oh, it was in, that's right. They were in Alaska working in trailers, doing um, natural gas drilling, oil drilling, la la la. These guys have all their housing paid for, all their food. All they do is get drunk on the weekends and go back and work on the oil rig. And so they've got these big fat W-2s and in this, well, I'm keeping it 
to the point here. They were the ones that said, yeah, we're doing this after-tax contribution because we have so much money. We wanted to keep putting money in our 401k and then convert it to Roth. Can we do that? That's what we've been doing. Please verify. And we're like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> so in a nutshell, they called their HR department and said, yeah, I did my deferral for 23. I may have did my Roth personally, but I want to put more in the 401k. And the company said, okay, you can do that, but you don't get a deduction for it because you've already done your deferral. And they say, that's okay, just put it in. I'm gonna convert it to Roth anyway on day two. And the employer's brain explodes. The client's like, am I crazy? And they call us. Yeah. And Matt Sorensen verified for them. Yeah. You can convert this to a Roth on day two. And so yeah. basically it's like a supercharged backdoor Roth yeah. And then your example is like 38 grand. Just yeah, you? right there. That was $38,000. And I do remember these guys, they were a Fidelity and we did it there. And this is around 2014. There was a case that came out and then in a uh, kind of like a revenue ruling from the IRS that validated this, that said, yes, you can put more money in up to the 401k total, comp, you know, deferral and uh, maximum limit, which is now is 69k for 2024. And, and it can also roll out to a Roth IRA, which is the key because they didn't take a tax deduction. See, it's after tax dollars, meaning you already paid tax on it. You're not getting a deduction, but it is going, uh, it can then roll to a Roth IRA with no conversion. You don't need to convert it because it's already after tax. You didn't take a deduction on it. So that was a cool strategy and where we kind of picked it up. And this 2014 or whatever is where this kind of new strategy came about. And this has been coined the mega backdoor Roth 401k. Not to be confused with the backdoor Roth IRA, which is a little different, a little different procedural steps. This is the mega backdoor Roth 401k. And to put a, a very tactical twist on this, between now and the end of the year, you would call your employer and go, I wanna do an after-tax contribution. And again, you're probably not gonna have this in a, in, uh, with W-2 wages. So you've got to show up with a check and that money can come from anywhere. It could come from rental income. It could come from your stock por brokerage portfolio. Uh, it could come from your grandma that left you an inheritance. Doesn't matter. So you'd show up and make this contribution directly to the 401k plan, work with your HR administrator, and then you're able to roll it out again into that Roth. So this is just incredibly powerful because now we are pushing close to 80 grand. And if you're over age 50, even more, and then you're yeah. married times two, holy crap. This is how the rich get richer because you start plowing away 80 to 100 grand in a Roth IRA. We're putting your HSA in the mix here too, but you're putting that money away every year. It's not just a few years with a good ROI of 10 or 15% self-directing this. You're sitting on a million dollars and, and boom. Yeah. And for those that are in your 50s or 60s and scared to death about retirement, and you're like, how do I catch up? This is how you yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. And if for any of you, I'm, we're actually doing math here. We're at $84,000, okay? $84,000. You don't need to be self-employed. You don't need to do a DB plan or a pension plan or these crazy strategies. We're not bringing in whole life or anything like that. We're just talking about tried and true retirement accounts, 401ks, Roth IRAs, health savings accounts, when you add up these buckets and you're strategic about it, you can get $84,000. If you're over 50, this would have been in the $90,000. And like Mark said, if you're married, we're talking like $160,000, $180,000 a year in contributions that can be saved in a tax advantaged way. That's the secret sauce. All right. Now that would be number six. Oh, pen drop. There we go. <laughs> I'm joining the, joining the crowd here. All right. Now number seven. Oh, we're not done yet. <laughs> Oh my gosh, no. Okay, now you get into cash balance plans, 401H, and DB plans. Yeah. Now we could put those all in one bucket yeah. rather than break those down. But we have- like you're self-employed. Yeah, and, and so fair enough. Or you have a side hustle. True. You or True. your spouse. Yeah. And so now you're saying, I've got some additional income with consulting, a 1099, or you're self-employed. I've done everything I can with my 401k, Roth, and HSA, what more? And so we have financial advisors that we work with in our Main Street Tax Pro program. We teach this at our 360 conference. We have a whole class 
on what to do for one percenters. Mm -hmm. We're getting into solar. We're getting into uh, oil and gas. We're talking 1031s. We're talking equipment and real short-term rentals and costs. Uh, we're trying to find every write-off we can for you, but you're going to get into, I'm going to call it cash balance, mm -hmm. DB, or 401H. Still not the life insurance route. Yeah. Uh, these are all deferred comp plans, uh, and... Uh, you could do two or three hundred grand. Yeah, and that's taxandlegal360.com. Yes. Um, that'll be here in Phoenix in early December. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what's awesome about all the tax strategies and savings there is that's the money if you're being doing it in a tax advantage way. You can be dropping into these retirement accounts because yeah. all that money you're saving on taxes. So, um, but I think those last ones work for self employed. And if you are self employed, you might have been doing a solo K in this process. And we should probably do an order for self-employed people because it is a little different than the high income W-2 mm -hmm. earner. Um, it's frankly simpler because we're like, solo K, okay, backdoor Roth, HSA, you got a spouse, we're doing the same thing for them. And if you're over this 80K-ish, because you, you end up at the same 80K-ish at the end of the day, we're looking over here and maybe you should have just done a cash balance plan or a DB plan where you could be doing $300,000 a year. Yeah. And let's big picture as tax advisors, which all of our attorneys are. If any of you are feeling like, holy crap, my accountant, my tax lawyer, my lawyer, yeah. and my financial advisor is not talking like this, please do what we call a comprehensive tax and business consultation. You can get, go to KKOS Lawyers, work with any of our 12 to 13 tax lawyers now, and they'll get on a call and spend several hours building a plan and then delivering with a diagram and a checklist. Then you can take it wherever you want. I mean, we're talking a few thousand dollars. We're not charging these big $20,000, you know, offshore crazy retainer crap for under five grand. And that's for the highest, highest um, net worth individual. Many of our clients are doing this for $1,500 to $2,000. Just getting a consultation where you build a plan that you can build upon. And we're going to save you 10 times that in taxes. So get a consultation, come up with a plan. And when you're looking at the big picture, we're going to talk real estate. We're going to talk about setting aside money for rental property or some other types of investments, maybe life insurance. It's not all retirement accounts, but I think this is where it starts because it's asset protected. You can choose the investment. You're not locked into premiums. Yeah. There's just so many good things. Yeah. Yeah. So um, now directedira.com, we do a lot of these accounts at directedira.com. You need the backdoor Roth IRA, the HSA, solo K if you're self-employed. We can definitely help with the accounts there. So, um, but whoever you use, whether you're working with us or you're doing it on your own or different companies, we don't, I mean, we want you to use us. We, our companies are amazing. We got an incredible team. Um, but I just want to make sure you know, you can maximize this. We're not just talking thousands of dollars. You know, we're talking 84K there in that example that we gave um, that can be tax advantaged, can be money working for you, helping you build your financial future. Yeah. Well, Matt Sorensen, I guess I will uh, give you a stamp of approval. Thank on you. On your uh, decision tree. Mark Kohler certified. Yep, yep. certified <laughs> decision tree. I think we really flushed it out there. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everybody, for listening this week. Uh, please give us a five-star. Share this podcast. There's so many people that are starving for this information. You're actually doing a wonderful service to others to help spread the good news about the ability to use retirement accounts and invest them in what you know best. We're grateful to have you as part of our uh, podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. See you next time.